Well, we're delighted to have all the young ones back again with their family and friends and also those that are tuning on on the live stream. And we want to warmly welcome you, and it is a very warm welcome uh, to the house. We have all the doors open and the windows open, and there's little else we can do, but we're glad to see you. And they say that the heat rises, so up in the gallery, uh, we apologise. The central heating is still on. We forgot to switch it off. Uh, the air conditioning is not working, so hopefully you'll be able to survive the service. But we're glad to see you all, both upstairs and down, and also to the young people, the boys and girls, and some of our young people taking part here today, and also many of our own uh, young adults. We warmly welcome you all in our Saviour's name. So we're glad to see you, and we trust the Lord will bless the program again this evening and we know the Lord's blessing. We're going to turn in our hymn books to the hymn 310. 310. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5. So all the odd verses, it's not because we are odd. Some people might think we are, but all the odd verses, 1, 3, and 5, and we're going to stand together as we sing. So the words will come up on screen, and there also should be a hymn book in front of you. Let's all stand as we worship. Well, we're going to unite our hearts together in prayer. Just realized during the singing there's a fan here, and I decided to put it on, so it'll probably blow about 10 years' dust all around me. Uh, but it's definitely working. The last time I put it on, the whole thing just fell to pieces, so I fixed it myself. <laughs> so if you hear a clatter in the pulpit, I race up and make sure it's switched off, but uh, we just need a wee bit of cool temperature. Let's just bow briefly in prayer. Father in heaven, it is with thanksgiving and praise, with adoration, that we enter into thy courts. Lord, you've been so good to us. Lord, we are blessed. We have to say that. We are truly blessed. And we acknowledge it. Lord, it's not of us, but of thee. Realize that all things come from thee. Every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Lord, it is of thy mercies that we're not consumed. Thy compassions they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. And we acknowledge thee in all of thy love and mercy. We thank thee for the greatest gift of all, of that of salvation, 
purchased for us at highest cost when Christ, the blessed Son of God and God the Son, came into this world by virgin birth. We bless thee for his sinlessly perfect life and then for that atoning death on the cross of Calvary. We thank thee he was the substitute, the one who stood between a holy God and sinful men and women, the one who endured God's wrath upon sin on his own sinless body. Lord, thou didst lay thy our sin on the body of thy son and he bore that accursed load and he suffered its just penalty even though he had no sin it was for our sins he did atone and we thank thee O God that he paid the price in full the wages of sin is death and Paul tells us that Christ died for the ungodly and we can say those of us who are born again and saved by grace that Christ died for me we thank thee for his sacrifice we praise thee for his shed blood we thank thee for his righteous life and we rejoice O god upon the life and death and resurrection of the son of god we stake our all for eternity we're not trusting in the church tonight we're not looking to institution or organization we're not lord dressed in the garb of lord anything lord or by way of right or ritual but our hope is found in Christ alone. We recognize, O oh God, that it is enough that Jesus died, that he died for me. And we thank thee for the love that drew salvation's plan. And O oh, the grace that brought it down to man. And O oh, the mighty gulf God did span at Calvary. And Calvary covers it all. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship thee as God. God blessed forevermore as the only mediator between God and men. And we thank thee for saving these precious souls of ours. We thank thee for keeping power. We rejoice that we're saved and kept by the power of God. And Lord, we just acknowledge it this evening. Thank thee for help today, for answers to prayer. Thank thee for the young ones and the boys and girls of our Sabbath school and Bible class. We thank thee, Lord, for gifting to this church, Lord, the little lambs of the flock, our young people and our young adults, Lord. And we, we cherish this generation. We covet it for thee and we pray for them. They're in our hearts, they're in our prayers, they're in our thoughts, Lord. We carry them to the Lord and lift them up to thee in a very dangerous and damaged world by sin and Satan. We cry, Lord, you'll call out a people for thyself, that you'll preserve a seed, O God, among us. And you'll grant, Lord, that you will save among the young people and raise up a generation that will blaze a trail for thee. That even these young ones would be so committed and dedicated to Christ, not only in their salvation but Lord in sanctification and service that they will provoke us older ones to jealousy by their zeal for the Lord and their love for Jesus Christ the Son of God so hear our prayer tonight bless this program that they have put together remember our Sunday school superintendent and our teachers we thank you for the parents both inside and outside the church who regularly send their children to our Sabbath school we thank you for those Lord lessons they've been taught we thank you for the uh, catechizing and Christian doctrine of the young we bless thee Lord for what God has done we thank thee for the memorization of Holy Scripture the capacity Lord they have they're like a sponge they can soak it in so well and we pray Lord that we will realize the great proverb there that tells us train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he shall not depart from it and therefore Lord we pray that thou will guide each one in faith and repentance to the cross and then lead them on in a life of dedication and service to Christ so bless us this evening another place places to inside and outside our own denomination Faith, faithful to the blood and book grant lord that christ will be exalted and sinners would be converted backsliders restored thy people revived and above all we pray for the exaltation of the lord jesus christ we humbly ask these things giving thanks in the savior's precious and worthy name Amen. Just before we hand over to our Sunday School Superintendent, uh, Mr. Mark Huddleston, we're going to ask our Clerk of Session, Mr. Jackie Allister, if he'll come forward, please. He's going to make some necessary announcements. So please just be patient, and then we'll get straight into our programme. Thank you. Good to see you all again this evening. If you're back again, then we welcome you back. If you weren't here this morning, you're here tonight, then we bid you welcome as well. We do pray that the Lord will bless us and do us good in his presence tonight. Uh, I'll run through the announcements uh, as quickly as possible, perhaps not as much detail as in the morning. 
but do remember our own folk, uh, our prayer meeting on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. And uh, I didn't realize this morning, but our brother, Mr. Robert McConnell, is going to be here for deputation uh, on Tuesday evening, so do keep that in mind. Uh, Friday evening at 10 p.m., the men's prayer meeting. Then, of course, remember uh, the barbecue on Saturday, 2.30 p.m., is for uh, the, the young folks, and, but for all the congregation as well, all, the, all of you here uh, are invited to that, 2.30 p.m. here in the church grounds. And weather permitting, there will be uh, some activities uh, organized for the young folks and perhaps bouncy castles and things like that that uh, they enjoy. So do remember that t starting at 2.30 on Saturday afternoon, this coming Saturday. Uh, and as we mentioned this morning, uh, if uh, there are those who feel they could help out with bringing uh, some sweet things, tray bakes, perhaps desserts for afterwards, if you could have a word with Mark uh, after the meeting tonight, that would be much appreciated. Next Lord's Day, our services, well, I was going to say as usual, but there'll be no Sabbath school uh, over the summer months now until September. Uh, but half past 11, our morning service as usual, uh, and it's the first, last Lord's Day of the month. Uh, so after our morning service, we'll be meeting around the Lord's table. Uh, 3 p.m., weather permitting, our open air witness around the town here. Uh, and at 7 p.m., it will be our family and friends night, as we mentioned. Our brother, Mr. Drew Murray, bringing a personal word of testimony. Uh, and Mr. Stephen Anderson uh, is the soloist on uh, next Lord's Day evening. Of course, remember the seasons of prayer, uh, half an hour before each of the services. I'll just mention quickly again uh, the sheets in the church, uh, the sheet in the uh, hall of the church there, uh, in relation to the work amongst the boys and girls. Our brother Robert has uh, set out a sheet there for those who are able to help uh, with the pop-up meetings that take place during July around the neighbourhood, with the Holiday Bible Club for a week in August, and then also, of course, for the recommencement of the mustard seed meeting come September. If you can help out. Uh, then do add your name to those lists, please. Uh, did I mention, yes, our brother Robert, if you have the missionary boxes, if you would bring those in as soon as possible, please. Thank you. So we do thank our brother very much indeed for making those announcements. We'll just add one more to it. That is, this Friday night is the annual barbecue and auction for Portadown Independent Christian School. It's on the premises, and we trust if you're able to get over this Friday night, uh, starting at uh, 7 o'clock, then you'll be made... Uh, most welcome. Well, without further ado, we're going to hand over to our Sunday School Superintendent, our brother Mark, and he'll introduce uh, the programme of the young people. Thank you. Well, it's great to see everybody out this, this evening here, and so many gathered out, and it's great to see all the boys and girls you set the bar very high this morning, boys and girls, with your, your singing and your recitals, so it's going to have to be really special tonight, so it is, but I'm sure you'll not let us down. And there's a nice table there of goodies for you to take home with you afterwards, so if you sing really well, I'm sure we'll be able to make sure you come home with something this evening. Um, I just mentioned a few people this morning, but there's, there's others who have made today possible here just by helping here. Um, some of our, our young people, Emily and Rebecca, and I hope, Leah, you don't mind me including you in amongst the young people. I'm sure you're, you're grand with that. Leah. They have been a great help to us to so have, but especially want to thank Kyle. Kyle's been laboring away there behind the scenes for us over the last few weeks, making sure everything runs smooth on the screen for the boys and girls. So thank you, Kyle. And thanks to Kyle and Lydia and Norman and others who have helped in the bus throughout the year. It's been really appreciated as they bring the boys and girls from the town in on the bus during the year. Um, just thinking of tonight, and you know, we said there's no particular theme that we picked, which isn't for the year, but I was looking in Isaiah 55, in the verse 3, it says, Incline your ear and come unto me, here, and your soul shall live. And uh, family and friends tonight, we want you to incline your ear to listen to the boys and girls and certainly hear, but the reason we want you to hear is because the message that they have is a message of life. 
eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a hymn in our children's section of our hymn book. Um, it says, come to the Savior, make no delay. Here in his word, he has shown us the way. Here in our midst, he's standing today, tenderly saying, come. And as the boys and girls come now, we'll ask Caleb and Bethan uh, to come now. Um, as, as they come, we ask that you'll hear and not only listen, but come to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Welcome to our Children's Day evening service. We will bring our verses from this morning, a mix of some different and the same courses, along with musical recitals. As children and young people, we give thanks to God for the wonderful gift of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ the King. As we sing and say our verses, like the chorus, we want every one of us to be used of God. As Luke read this morning, let me tell you how. Tell us how can children serve a glorious King? What have they to offer? What have they to bring? Willing hands for service, eager feet to run, on his mighty irons will the set of sun. Will he hear our praying? Will he stoop to bless? Does he bend above us in our helplessness? Yes, he answers always when the children cry, guiding all their footsteps with the Father's eye. Mrs. Martin's class are going to come and recite John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Sam and Daniel, then Eden and Nancy. Lydia's class will also come now. They have been learning Psalm 121 and will recite it after Mrs. Martin's class. Chloe and Maisie, followed by Benjamin and Isaac. Your heart be troubled, you believe in me, Lord, and so in me, in my Father's voice, for many mansions, if I were not so, I would have told you, I would have been a place for you, So, and um, so, Let not your heart be troubled, he all live also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions, it's for so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and save you unto myself, but where you may be also. I will lift up my eyes on the hill, when it comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, made heaven and earth. He will not he suffer, suffer thy foot, foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. All the boys and girls of the Sunday school are now going to come up and sing four courses. They are, She lost it, she lost it. They all were used of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Twelve men went to spy.
Our second Bible recital is by the Junior Bible Class, Emily, then Aaron, followed by Jonathan, and finally Matthew. The Bible says in Psalm 27, verses 1 to 14, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, in whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and mine foes, came up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though one host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Therefore... For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou says, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father or my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. 
Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not under the will of my enemies, for fault witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe thy cruelty. I have feared that unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We are going to have two music recitals from um, members of the Sunday School and Junior Bible class. Timothy on the piano, then Emily and Jonathan on the trombone and your phoneme. Thank you. Some of the girls from Rachel's class are going to come and sing, Isn't He Wonderful?
learners class have been learning Romans chapter 8 verses 31 to 39 this year and are going to come and recite them to us now. Abby, Maya and Freya, followed by Andrew, Emily and Mikey, then Noah, Timothy and Madeline. Our class is now going to recite Romans 8, verse 31, verse no, 2, 39. What shall we then say to these things? Is, for, is, is God, if for God is for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his only son, but give him of for us all, he that so freely can give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, you rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. <coughs> we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors for him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. We have four more courses for the boys and girls of the Sunday School to sing as they come up. They are, Jesus loves me meekly, one way God said to get to heaven, 25 words in John 3.16, and he made the stars to shine.
Rachel's class learnt the I Am verses this year in John this year, and they're going to recite them for us now. We will hear from Ishak, Evie, Jude, then Sam, Lacey, May, and finally Lydia, Annabelle, and Eliza. John 6, verse 45. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth in me shall never thirst. John 6, verse 47 and 48. Verily, verily, I say unto him, He that believeth on me shall have everlasting life. I am that bread of life. John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John, verse 9. John, 
9 verse 5 as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world I am the door by me if any man enter and shall be saved and shall go in the night and find pasture. I am, the Bible says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me at the Father but by me. John 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 11 verse 25, I'm the resurrection and the life, he that believe in me, though he were dead, shall he live. John chapter 15 verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bring forth much fruit, without me ye can do nothing. We have two last musical pieces for this evening, one on the piano and the other the violin. Matthew on the piano followed by Madeline with the violin. Well, again, give the boys and girls a big round of applause there.
Hey, don't be slapping the back of the person beside you, but boys and girls, you give each other your friend there a pat on the back beside you there. I noticed Caleb, Caleb, Aaron, Beth and Jonathan and Matthew didn't give each other. You should give each other a pat on the back too. You said well as well. Come on, you're not too old to give each other a pat on the back. <laughs> the enthusiasm. Right, we'll, we'll change your positions just before Chris comes. Thank you, boys and girls. That was wonderful. Before we um, bring Chris back again to bring his message this evening, we'll change our positions with the hymn number 265. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and Nazarene, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4 of 265. Just before Chris brings the message to the boys and girls, Joshua Highlands is going to come and read from God's word to us, and then Chris will bring the message. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 9, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Amen. I do want to thank Joshua very much for reading God's word to us. It's been a real blessing to listen to all the boys and girls. Thank you, boys and girls and young people, for 
participating. You've done exceptionally well, and it has been a real blessing to be here. I'd like to thank the Reverend Martin and also our brother, Mr. Mark Huddleston, for the words of invitation to come and the welcome to come. And uh, it's been a real blessing, as I say, to be here today. Thank our brother Mark and Deborah for their fellowship today, their hospitality as well. I want to leave one verse with you this evening, found in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23, where we read, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Boys and girls, let's just buy very briefly in prayer. A, arms folded, B, B, bow our heads, and then C, we close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we want to thank Thee tonight for the blessing of being in the house of God, listening to the children participate. Lord, it has thrilled our hearts afresh, and we pray for Thy blessing upon every single life. We ask, Lord, You'll now settle us down as we consider the Word of God and the lesson before us. We pray that much will be made of Jesus Christ. We pray in his precious and worthy name. Amen. Boys and girls, I've brought some objects and some props to help me with tonight's story. Let me just see. I wonder, does any of the boys and girls... Any of you know what this here flag is? And look, we've got a fan here, she's so going to flutter. Who can tell me, what is that flag? On the very end there. It's the Olympic flag. Come on, you can get a packet of sweets. I need to make sure that I get rid of these sweets. There we go, we'll get the fishing net out. You can take one of them. That's the way Mr. Martin likes to see the fishing pole. With a good bend on it. <laughs> Thank you. It is an Olympic flag. And boys and girls, when we think about the, Olympic, the Olympics, did you know that there are over 40 sports in the Olympics? You've got the swimming, the gymnastics, the horse riding, all of the different sporting events. I'm sure you have your own event that you like to watch. Well, here on the Olympic flag, you'll see that there are five rings. Now, whenever the Olympic flag was drawn up, way back in the early 1900s, boys and girls, the five rings represent the five continents of the world that were then recognized. So in other words, it represents, the five rings represent the world and the Olympic teams throughout the world. There are lots and lots of different rings that we find and that we come across throughout life and day to day. Can any of the boys and girls tell me, what sort of rings are there? Who can tell me a ring? This boy here, one of the, go ahead, son. A wedding ring. You're a bit young for that. Come on here. <laughs> Could you a pack of sweets out of there? There we go. Wedding ring. Any other types of rings? This girl. Earrings. Earrings. Oh, very good. Come on ahead. Very good, you're reading my notes. Who said I know? Yes, dude, what is it? Swimming ring, oh, come on up. A swimming ring. Oh, yes, we'll have the rubber ring. We had it this morning, but we'll have it here tonight again. A rubber ring, that's right. My wife said to me, she said, I would like a new ring. And so I got her coconut rings. They're her favorites. Let me see. No, I'm only joking. Uh, when it comes to rings, I said, I'll get you a ring. These are Mr. Martin's favorite too. Who likes party rings? Oh, love it. Can any of the boys and girls tell me, just as a matter of interest, what is Mr. Martin's favorite snack? Who can tell me? Eliza? Ah, oh, Mars bar. That's right. Here, get a pack of the sweets. And there you go. Take the Mars bar out of that and give it to Mr. Martin. Whoa, he's a happy man tonight. He said to me, he said, his favorite ring is a gravy ring, a donut. Now, I wonder, boys and girls, we have already heard about the wedding ring. Do you know the three rings that there are when we think about a marriage? Who can tell me? There's a wedding ring and there's what? 
engagement ring. Oh, good man, take a packet of those there. An engagement ring. And then I don't think you'll get the third one. It's suffering. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I said, dear. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> now, okay. So boys and girls, there are lots and lots of different rings. And I've got some pictures to help me with tonight's story. We find rings throughout the Bible. Lots and lots of different rings. And here we have an engagement ring. And there are lots and lots of different rings. But I'm going to start tonight with the ring of acceptance. Acceptance. I need to speak correctly. Boys and girls, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15 about the parable of the lost son. There in Luke chapter 15, we read about two brothers. And the younger of them said, Father, you know the way someday you're going to die and you're going to leave a lot of money? Father, I want the money now. He couldn't wait. He couldn't wait, boys and girls, to get out into the things of this world. And sadly, how many people there are like that. And so the prodigal son there he got the money from his father. The Bible says a father divided unto them, to each of his sons, the inheritance. And there the prodigal son packed off, packed up all he had. He went into a far country, boys and girls, and he wasted everything that he had. And after he wasted it all, here was a prodigal son sitting down amongst the pigs. And he was, he had no money left. He had nothing left at all. And he thought to himself, oh, they see that pig food. Boys, that, that would be a nice f f uh, feed for me. Boys and girls, as he was there amongst the pigs, he thought about something. He thought about his father's house. He realized there's bread there. I know what I'm going to do, he thought. I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm going to say to him, Father, I've sinned. And Father, just make me a servant. And so it was that the prodigal son, boys and girls, he turned around. He done a 180. And he headed back to his father's house. Now here's something lovely. Whenever he was returning home, he was perhaps wondering, well, I wonder what my father will have to say, or will he really accept me? But boys and girls, the Bible tells us the father was watching. There he would go out every day. Oh, when's my son going to return? And not only was he watching, he was waiting for him day after day after day. But he was also willing to receive him back. And so the Bible tells us how that the father... When he seen him, he ran and he fell on his neck. He kissed him. And then he said this, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring in his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. He got the robe. He got a lovely ring. And he got the shoes. Boys and girls, the father put the ring on his finger to show him that he was part of the family, to show him that he loved him. And I'm sure that the son there in the days that lie ahead, even days when he wondered, did his father really love and accept him? He could just look at that ring. There was a symbol. His father loved him. I'm glad tonight that we tell boys and girls, mums and dads, and everyone about a Christ who loves sinners. About a God who sent forth his Son into the world to seek and to save sinners. Now there's also, boys and girls, an engagement ring. Um, now I hope I'm not putting anybody under pressure here tonight to, 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 you know, to get out the ring. But sometimes... Boys and girls, or well, it's not sometimes, whenever somebody's going to get married, they will propose to their partner, to their fiance, and become the fiance. And then they'll buy, they'll bring out the ring and they'll give an engagement ring. They'll say, will you marry me? And of course then, 
the fiancé, she gets the ring. Now, I'm really delighted, I'll tell you why. My wedding ring now fits me. <laughs> Didn't fit me for a very long time. But I'm glad that it fits me again. And when we think about the wedding ring, it reminds us, doesn't, doesn't it, of love and commitment and union. Where two are joined together and they become one. Reminds us about the greatest love of all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Boys and girls, you're singing beautiful, lovely choruses. The choruses have been wonderful. I love to sing. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Wide, wide as the ocean. High as the heavens above. Deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Savior, Savior's love. Now, one of the favorites, certainly a favorite of mine, is God's love is like a circle. A circle big and round. And when we see a circle, no ending can be found. And so the love of Jesus goes on eternally, forever and forever. I know that God loves me. The ring of acceptance. But there's another ring in the Bible, boys and girls. And it's the ring of authority. You see, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis... We read the lovely story about Joseph. Now, Joseph was given a very... What was he given by his father? Who can tell me? Do you know what it was? A uh, coat. Come on, you here. Get a pack of the sweets here. He was given a coat, a very special coat of many colors. Thank you very much. Boys and girls... His brothers were jealous of him. And they thought, you see that Joseph one? See what father, he's, a, he's a, his favorite. And Joseph has all these dreams, etc. And so they decided we're going to get rid of Joseph. And so he was sold. They sold him into Egypt. But boys and girls, the story of Joseph is one of faithfulness. Because there Joseph was faithful to God. In fact, whenever Joseph was faithful, we read about how Pharaoh took the ring off his finger. It was a, a royal ring. And he gave it to Joseph. Joseph, you're now in the position of authority here. Joseph, whatever you say will go, it will become law. Joseph, I'm going to honor you. And it was a ring of authority. Do you know when we think about authority? We think of the greatest authority that there is, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ. We think of the, how Joseph is a picture of the Savior, how that Joseph lived that right life, that good life, how Joseph honored God. We don't read about any sinful things in his life. And it reminds us about the perfect sinless life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say all power, all authority is found in Jesus Christ. Just moving along very quickly, there's also a ring of appearance. Here we have a picture of the Pharisee and the publican. And you see, the Pharisees, they would look down on people. They would think, oh, I'm much better than that person there. I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. I say my prayers. I go to the temple. And so the Pharisees were filled with self-righteousness. And the book of James, we read that if a person come into the assembly, into the church, with a gold ring, goodly apparel, nice clothes, and there come into the church also a poor man, James says, don't look down on other people. Boys and girls, what a great lesson for us as we think about the ring. The ring of appearance. We shouldn't look down on other people. Maybe they wouldn't have the, the nicest of clothes or they're maybe just a little bit different from us. But we should treat everyone the same. Why? Because we're just sinners saved by grace. Then there's another ring and it's the ring of affection. Ring of love. And we're told about this ring. It reminds us about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ as we read the book of the Song of Solomon. You see, to the Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the Rose of Sharon. 
He's the lily of the valleys. He's the fairest of 10,000 to their soul. To the Christian, he is my everything. He is my all. We can say with the words from Song of Solomon 5 verse 14, his hands are as gold rings set with the beryl. And there it's describing Christ in a picture of Christ. And when you think of boys and girls, the most beautiful diamond ring, the most expensive ring, it's nothing in comparison and compared to the Lord Jesus. He is altogether lovely. We're nearly through here, but here's another ring. It is the ring of approach. Here, boys and girls, we have a picture of the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. Boys and girls, can I say that God gave to Moses the instructions to his people to build a tabernacle, a tent. It was like a, a portable church. And there as they were going through the wilderness, they had a place, a church, where they could come and they could meet with God. But in through the veil, in the holiest of holies, was the Ark of the covenant. The place where God dwelt. And so boys and girls. The high priest could only come there. Once a year on the day of atonement. He came with the blood. Reminding us. Everything in the tabernacle. Reminds us and tells us about Christ. And they would, the, the high priest would there come. And there he would offer that sacrifice. Boys and girls. God said you see the ark of the covenant. You're not to touch it. And so in the corners, in each corner, there was a ring. And the wooden staves, the poles were covered with gold. God said, put those poles through the rings. There you're going to carry the ark. But there was a man called Uzzah. One day the ark was being transported. And somehow the oxen that were towing it, or the oxen that were in front, be they stumbled a bit. It was on the cart. And boys and girls, it began to fall. Uzzah put forth his hand and touched the ark. And that moment he died. Why? Because God is holy. We can only approach God his way by the blood sacrifice. Now I've got another ring with me here. Let me just see if I can get it out here. Here it is. Got that much stuff here, boys and girls. Get this one here out of the room. Here's another ring. Wow. It is a, a life ring. Very good. Come on, you get a packet of sweets. Still got sweets here. My wife will give off if I go home with sweets. You take a packet of sweets out of there. Thank you very much. Can I say, Mr. Martin knows all about life rings. And life jackets and fishing and falling in. The, you ask him later on. We we'll haven't time to go into it. But he knows all about life rings. Now I was kindly lent this life ring by the, skip, the skipper of a boat in Porta Vogue. And you'll see it has the name. Does anybody see the name on it? What's it say? Jesse. Jesse J. Right. Now, it's not the person that some people might be thinking about it. It's not about a pop singer. Whenever the skipper of this boat, whenever he had a little girl, his wife had a little girl, they named her Jessie Jane. You see, and he put the name here up on the life ring. Now, boys and girls, can I say, things aren't always as they appear. And when we think about the life ring, can I say that you need to be laying hold upon the life ring. Now, I brought another one with me here. Here is a life ring. And if I was to throw this down to you, if I was to use, would this be any good? Why not? Surely, sure looks the same. Why is it no good? Yes, this one here is a fake one. It's only a children's one. You need to have the right life ring. Boys and girls, you see, whenever you put the life ring around you, when you're in it, you're safe and you're secure. Oh, it reminds us about 
salvation. It reminds us about the need to be saved, to be in Christ. Just one more ring. I have it here with me. Does any of you know what this ring is? Who can tell me? No, it's an eternity ring. Now, usually it's bought. You buy your wife an eternity ring. Maybe the birth of a child. First child or one year after marriage. Hope I'm not putting anybody under pressure here. Boys and girls, as we finish, reminds me of the story about a man called Mr. Eternity. And so it was at Arthur Stace in Sydney. He used to go to get up very early in the morning and he would go out throughout the streets and there on the streets of Sydney he would write down the word eternity and he would go a little further and he would write about chalk again eternity on the two, when the 2000 year celebrations took place one of the first places was in Australia and there in great big words eight or letters eternity was there on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Eternity, eternity. Where will you spend eternity? Now here's the thing about the life ring. Boys and girls, if you're in a boat and the boat went down and you're there in the water, the life ring is thrown out. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to lay hold upon it. You've got to grasp it. It's not enough to know how to be saved, to see the way to be saved. You've got to lay hold upon eternal life. And I trust and pray that you will do that very thing. I'm going to hand back over to Mr. Martin. Boys and girls, thank you so much for listening up so well. It's been a real blessing to be here. Thank you so much. Well, we'd like to thank our brother uh, Chris for those timely messages today, and I trust to be able to understand what he was saying about the rings, and the most important one was the life ring, and you've got to be holding fast to Christ for salvation. You've got to be uh, grasping the finished work, trusting in the precious blood and the one sacrifice that he has made on the cross that we might have acceptance and have that ring of reconciliation. So I trust the Lord will bless his word to all of our hearts. On behalf of our church family here, our session committee, and communicant members of Cumber Free Presbyterian Church, uh, we want just to say a thank you to our superintendent, Mr. Mark Huddleston, and to our Sunday school teachers and helpers, uh, and those who assist in the uh, adult Bible class as well. And we want to thank you as parents for uh, your kindness and love toward the congregation and sending your children and young people out on a Sunday morning. There's a great effort that's made, a sacrifice, and it's all voluntary. And we're thankful to the Lord for those that are committed to the work among the young. So we just like to say a big thank you to the boys and girls for coming out so faithfully. And uh, we're going just to have the prize giving. Can I say that there's supper for every single person, boys and girls, mums and dads and others. Uh, You make your way over to the church hall after the service here, and we have supper provided. Just sit at the table wherever you like, and uh, there's some refreshments for all who have come this evening. But just bear with us now as we hand out these prizes to the boys and girls. Thank you. Okay, boys and girls, now you listen out for your class, and then Mr. Martin will call out your name. This is the most nervous time for me in case I've forgotten somebody. So if I've forgotten you, don't worry. Come and see me at the end, and I'm sure we'll have something for you. So we'll start with Mrs. Martin's class. So Mrs. Martin's class. Okay, Nancy. And Daniel. Uh, Eden. Oops, let's keep that in there, Chris. And Sam. Good boy.
Okay, Darcy and Kane, they're not here, but would somebody like to pick them up for them? Okay, Evie or Maya, or Evie. Make sure you get them now, would you? I do be selling them to them. <laughs> okay, Lydia's class, uh, Maisie? No? James, come on ahead. Maisie's younger brother. Good boy, you behaved, James, didn't you? <laughs> and Chloe. And Isaac. Oh, this one, no, this one. There are two. There's Isaac and Isaac. Is that, do we get the two? I don't think you recognise this name. Benjamin? Who's that? <laughs> oh, Ben. Come on ahead. <laughs> Rachel's class, and we'll have another Sam. Good boy. And Evie. Thanks, Chris. And Annabelle. Uh, Lacey May. And Lydia. Georgia? And Jude? Good boy. And Eliza? Good girl. Ishak? Here he is. Lorna's class now, so Annabelle. No. Nope. Sorry, Rachel's class. I say Lorna's class. She's not here? Okay. Can anybody collect that for her? No. Oh, yes. Freya. And Abby. Andrew. And Micah. And Maya. And Noah. Emily. Timothy. And Madeline or Maddie. To Norman's class, that's Aaron. And Emily. Jonathan. Matthew. Matthew. 
Uh, this is Mark's class, Bethan. Uh, Rebecca, that's Rebecca Huddleston. Caleb. Lucas, is he here? Oh, he's at the back, doing the sound. And Joshua Highlands. Thanks, Lucas. And Daniel, that's Daniel Gilmore. You thought it was you, did you? <laughs> Timothy Craig, he's up in the, up in the bal balcony there. Do you want to come down? <laughs> no? He does, hi. Good man. I'll give him a round of applause. Bye. Ah, right. <laughs> no, only joking, only joking, only joking. Uh, Matthew Cook. Is that right? Andrew. Come and get this from, from Matthew. You give that one to Micah. Good man. <laughs> Thanks, Timothy. Now, there, there's two two final prizes. It's always with a wee bit of sadness we say goodbye to some of the, the, the young people from the Bible class. And um, well, one of them is delighted to be saying goodbye because he's my son and he's been stuck with me for about five. He was delighted to have Jackie for about a year just before or just after COVID. So Jackie, you, you lifted him again there and then he got stuck with me again for another year. Um, but Luke is finishing uh, Bible class and also Rebecca Gilmore is finishing this year. Rebecca has been a, a big help. Um, she hasn't got the class as much as she'd like because she's doing what she's doing now. She's sitting with the boys and girls and helping the teachers. So, I have. so if Luke and Rebecca come up and um, we want to say goodbye to you, but thank you for being so faithful. Come on, Rebecca. Look. So on behalf of everybody in the Bible class, thank you very much. And God's richest blessing. I know, Rebecca, you've got one more exam left, so all the best for that. And look. Now, boys and girls, have I missed anybody? I'm hoping I see no hands. Excellent. Now, I know there's some of the little ones. I see, uh, I can see Rachel at the back there. Is there any other little ones here tonight? Is Seth here tonight? He is here. Joshua. And Joshua, right. So I've got some wee things for you. Don't go, and I'll give them to you before you go. So if there's any other little ones. Now, I mean little ones here. Don't be, don't be hounding me here there. Um, and we'll, we'll get you a prize before you go here. So thank you very much. And Mr. Martin, you maybe say grace here before we go over. Folks, don't forget about the supper, a supper for everyone. Make your way over to the church hall. We'll just bow briefly in prayer. Father, we thank thee for today. We thank thee for a sense of the divine presence. We bless thee once again for the story of God's love for a sinful world, the sending forth of the darling of thy bosom, the willingness of Christ to leave heaven, to come into this world as a true man, and then to die such a cruel and agonizing death on the cross, as the substitute for sinners. He, his body was broken, his life blood shed. We thank thee that he paid the price for our sins, that our sins might be forgiven and we would have peace with God. We thank thee for a risen Savior, one who is a prince, one who is a Savior of sinners, one who is alive forevermore and able and willing to save all who repent and believe on him. And we pray you'll bless the word beyond, even, Lord, the reach of the enemy, back at home and burn it into every heart, and grant that souls will be converted to Christ and saved by sovereign grace. Take of our thanks for the young people and the boys and girls. Keep thy hand upon them over this summer month. Watch over them, Lord, we pray. Remember some who are waiting examination results. We pray, Lord, that they will be guided by the Lord. They will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto them. So bless us now as a church family, and as we sit together in fellowship around a cup of tea and refreshments, do, Lord, hallow our 
a time with a sense of the divine presence. Take of our thanks for good things provided. We offer this our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen.